welcome to the Blendrig 5 tutorials. In this first series of tutorials, we will learn how to rig a character from scratch with feature film quality results. So, let's begin! First, you can download Blendrig from gitlab.com slash jpbosa slash Blendrig. Once you're in there, you can either check out the repository or you can download the Blendrig add-on as a zip file. From within Blender, you can install the add-on by going to File, User Preferences, Install from File, then you select the zip file, and then you can enable the add-on by clicking on the checkbox. You can also press the Save User Settings button to have the add-on enabled by default. So, here is the character I modeled for this tutorial. The first thing we will do is to add Blendrick to the scene with the add object shortcut. So we do add armature blend rig by pad rig. The first thing we see is that in layer 10 the blend rig armature appears. In layer 11 we see the mesh deform cage which we will use to deform the character. In layer 12 we can see some lattice objects and as you may also notice all these objects are already skinned and related to the blend rig armature. Finally, in layer 1, we can find a skinned mesh which we can use to create a low resolution proxy version of our characters. When you select Blendrig, a new tab appears in the Tools panel. There, you can find a rig picker for the body controls, a layers menu, another picker for the facial controls, an extra properties menu for different parts of the body. From the Custom Properties tab you can see the custom property that the selected bones have. And finally we have a Muscle System tab, which is just a placeholder I use for when I create a muscle system in a rig or when I want to drive certain properties. But don't worry, I'll cover all this later on in the tutorials. On the other hand, on the Armature Data tab you can find a Blendrig Rigging panel. There we have rigging properties for the body, for the face, for the layers, we also have a dynamic shaping tab which lets you modify the character in a similar fashion to how the flex rig does. We also have some optimizations tab and finally the rigging and baking tab. But again, I'll cover all this later on. So don't worry, you'll get to know what all these things do. First things first, I'll increase the layers count to 32. So now we can see all the armature layers in the layers panel. As you can see, each layer has its own name. So, now I'll put the armature in reproportion mode and I'll isolate the reproportion layer. The controllers from this layer will let you retarget the whole rig. We can start by scaling down the master controller so that the size of the armature fits the model a bit better. We can then adjust the torso of the character the master torso controller usually goes by the waist of the character and after fitting the master torso controller we can go moving all the rest of the spine controllers. Also within the torso we can see three controllers that have the shape of a cross which are called torso control imp str, torso control str and pelvis control str. These are pivot points for the torso controllers. So for instance if we place pelvis control str beneath the joint of the waist, you can get this kind of automated movement when you rotate the pelvis in FK mode. On the contrary, if you snap this controller to the joint of the waist, you won't get any automated movement in FK. So you have these two options which you can choose from. Likewise, the other cross, called Torso Control STR, is the pivot point for the torso but in IK mode. This greatly depends on the model, but you usually place this controller at the middle of the belly of the character. So thanks to this pivot point we get an organic deformation of the torso controllers in IK, as you see here. And finally, we have Torso Control in STR, which I usually place above the Spine 3 controller, which is actually the pivot point of the Torso controller in the inverted Torso Control mode. 
You usually use this mode when the character is hanging from somewhere or when he's upside down. So this is the pivot point for that controller in that mode. Just like with the pelvis controller, if you snap this controller to the spine 3 joint, you won't get any automated movement in that mode. After doing the torso, we can go and do the legs. So, it is important that you place the foot properly, especially in the heel. So, try to match the pivot point of the controller to the heel of the character, so that you can get a nice automated movement for walk cycles. Then we can go to the arms, starting from the collarbone, then the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. Sometimes it is a good idea to enable the wire view of the model, so that you can match the joints of the armature to the actual loops of the character. This stretching controller of the hand also represents the pivot point of the following movement, so it is important that you put it in the right place. So then we can go on to the fingers. In Blendrick the fingers also have an IK mode, so it is important that when you place the fingers, you give the joints a bit of curvature, you know, like an initial rotation, so that the IK knows where to bend to, so keep that in mind when placing the fingers. Then finally we do the neck. The most important part of the neck is that you place the head where the actual pivot point of the head should be and then you can place the rest of the neck controllers. So body placement is finished and now we're going to mirror the pose from one side to the other. For that we go to select, select pattern and then I write asterisk underscore L that will select all the left controllers. So, all we have to do now is to copy the left pose to the right controllers. For that, we press the copy pose button and then the paste flipped button. So that will mirror the left pose to the right side of the rig. So, as you can see, as the mesh deform cage is already skinned to the blend rig armature, it has adopted the proportions of the character. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that if you enable the two layers of the armature, by scaling those controllers, you can widen the mesh deform cage in certain parts. And that is important because, as we will see later, the key aspect here is that you need the mesh deform cage to surround the model, in order to be able to deform it. So, by scaling these controllers, you can get closer to getting the mesh deform cage look right. Well, it's time to move on to our next chapter, in which we will retarget the face.